Jose, I'm Brad Voss. I work at Taiko, I'm um, the CTO at Taiko, and like today I'm going to like briefly overlook like how we like achieve finality, like how we do like block production, how we prove things on, on, in our protocol, and also uh, like briefly talk about like a, a kind of like a new idea on like how to speed up like bridging out of the roll-up. So I hope I hope you guys like bridging because we're talking we're going to talk about some extra bridging uh, uh, some more. So yeah, uh, just some some extra like uh, some information because Taiko is like quite new. Um, so we officially started in uh, Q1 of, of this year, um, and I started a little bit before that working on like the Ethereum uh, Foundation, like privacy scaling uh, explorations, like community edition of the ZK EVM, um, like uh, more than a year ago. And, and Taiko kind of like grew from. Uh, Loopring, so uh, we kind of like split from Loopring, and Loopring is kind of like the app-specific ZK rollups which, we, which we've been building since like uh, 2018, end of 2018, uh, and so yeah, we're doing the split because we have like special products, like yeah, we have our own products for our own like app-specific ZK rollup, and like Taiko, we're trying to build like a neutral network of like a general-purpose ZK EVM, and currently we're like around 20 people now and uh, still growing. Um, so I think like uh, some of these things are already talked about like on the panel, uh, but yeah, we're trying to build like a, one, a true like type one ZK EVM. Um, so not just because we like it here, because but also because we get get a lot of uh, in return uh, for doing so, and again, all the benefits like the same same ecosystem, all, all the all the same the developer tools, same user experience, stuff like that. Um, and of course, the main downside would be like that the uh, the prover generation is, is slower or like more expensive than like more optimized ZK VMs that try to do like yeah, optimize more things. Um, but yeah, we're optimistic that in the end this won't matter that much and that we just get like gain a lot of like remaining true to Ethereum. Um, so yeah, like previously like, we will be like fully decentralized. Anyone will be anyone will be able to like run a node, like submit blocks uh, and like uh, use data published on Ethereum to like keep uh, in sync with the chain. Fully permission as well, anybody will be able to create blocks, uh, anyone will be able to create uh, like proofs for the blocks. Um, there's no like special data layer or whatever will depend heavily on Ethereum for uh, for doing so. And so the main architecture is kind of like three main parts, like the ZK EVM parts that will be able to generate the proof. Uh, is like we would depend on like this community effort of uh, the ZK EVM, uh, working with like the EF and Scroll. Um, there's also like the L2 client, uh, and for that we'll have like a slightly modified Ethereum client. So again, like very heavily depending on like already robust systems. And then we have like the protocol that just go, like, connects things and like defines how blocks are produced, how things are proven. And I'm gonna give some more information about the protocol now. So the idea is like very simple. So block producers will just be able to submit batches of just plain transactions to our roll-up smart contracts. And so because it's just like plain transactions, there's like no conflict inherent to that process. So multiple block producers can like just batch, uh, submit multiple batches. Ethereum miners or like validators now will be able to change the order and like how these batches are actually submitted in the contract. Uh, but that's fine, like it will work in any way. And then the smart contract will also add like some extra block properties, like the L1 timestamp will be injected, the difficulty that just like generated from the smart contract and not decided by the block producer itself. And then this is just added to like a plain list. So in the smart contract, basically the chain is simply, simply a list of transactions and the, and the smart contract also generated this like extra block properties, so the timestamp, the difficulties, so we actually know like how to execute those transactions. Uh, and at that point, everything is deterministic. So once a block is proposed, we achieve like in, uh, immediate finality. So there's like no way that these transactions are like have to be reverted or like there's some, some invalid state that's committed. No, there's like no way that actually can happen. And there is of course like a way that these transactions somehow can be executed. So, for example, a block producer can submit like garbage data, and then we just have like protocol rules that say, okay, we have to skip all of this data. Or another example is like a transaction can be like submitted twice to the chain, and then we have to execute the first time, and then just skip over it the second time. 
but the idea is that whatever is on chain will actually be like the actual chain. So there's no reversion, and there's like strict rules that can be followed to actually know like how all these transactions uh, should be uh, executed. So anybody can look at the smart contract, see all the transactions, uh, follow the protocol rules, and know what the latest state is of the chain. There's like no way that I can actually ever change after the block is proposed. And this will also, uh, of course, like uh, allow like parallel proof generations. So uh, each block, at each block, everybody knows like what the pre-state is, what the post-state is. They have all the transaction data, so they can just prove the block uh, using the data. And so that, that's what the slide say, says here. So in parallel, blocks will be proven. Uh, they don't have to be proven in the, the correct sequence. They just prove whatever block they want. Uh, and then in the end, once actually every block is proven up to some point, we call that like a verified uh, block, because at that point, on the smart contract, we actually know like what the pre-state is, what the post-state is. And basically, that means like we know on chain what the block hash is. And once we know on the blockchain what the block hash is, we can actually use that to read L2 data on R1, but also read uh, L2 data on other L2s. So we can just use that to, uh, to yeah, we use that for like bridging. Um, so essentially, if you want to bridge something, you just want to check if something happened on another L2. So you can just use that to uh, be able to know like the correct state at some point. And so yeah, so so the the finality of L2, like so it's only only really only important for like bridging out of the world. Uh, because then this other L1 or L2 needs to know the correct state of the of the uh, rollup that actually executed this so, uh, so again like a small recap is like finality achieved like immediately after the block is proposed, and then this verified state is achieved like months. Like the block is proven and all his all its predecessors uh, blocks are also proven. Uh, and so smart contracts then know like what the state is, and we just need that to be able to do uh, uh, But that also means like uh, the last uh, sentence there on the slide is okay, so if we need to know the verified state at some point on the of the chain in some smart contract, that also means that we are limited by the proof generation time uh, to be able to do this. So but if you do a withdrawal out of this ZPDM, that means you also have to at least wait as long as the proof generation takes. And so the question is then like, can we do, can we do better? Uh, and so this is kind of like a new idea. So this is kind of like a discussion that I had with like Carl, Flo uh, Carl Floch uh, from Optimism. Um, where he was like talking about like, okay, if some state actually hasn't changed for some time, can't you speed up this withdrawal somehow? Uh, and this like somehow, of course, if you think about it, like, think about it, like, okay, you can probably do it, but it will like, get very complex. Uh, but if you look at it in a certain way, that can, you can actually like, have like a very simplified version of this ID, uh, which makes it actually quite easy to do so. so know the state at some point, and you can also like, efficiently prove somehow that the state hasn't changed between the verified state and the withdrawal transaction, then you can actually efficiently prove that yeah, this withdrawal transaction is valid without having to wait on like a full ZKVM proof. Because again, like, we are type 1 ZKVM, a full ZKVM proof is kind of, kind of like, uh, okay. It's a lot of computation power and it takes a while to generate. So we're trying to avoid having to have this full ZKVM proof. Uh, and if you look at it in some way, then you can see like, okay, the ETH balance of the account is actually a good fit for this kind of like solution because an EOA can only spend ETH if it does a transaction. Uh, so it is the originating sender of a transaction. So you, you know when an account has spent ETH because it's directly encoded in a transaction. Uh, it's not the case for like an account receiving ETH because an account receiving ETH can come from any other account or like a smart contract. And to be able to verify that, you actually have to again like execute transactions, and then you need like a full ZKVM proof to be able to do so. Uh, but in this case, like spending an ETH amount from an EOA is just looking at the transaction itself. Uh, so. 
the idea is that at some point you have indeed like the perfect state, and you know that this account actually owns like 10 ETH at some point. And then you can actually somehow like you verify very efficiently that this account hasn't spent like more than 9 ETH, for example, uh, between yeah, this verified state, which you know is true because it has like a full CK view. Uh, and then you have like this bad draw transaction at, at some some later point. It's just like okay, at this point, this there's like this withdrawal transaction, and you can actually say like okay, this is a valid uh, withdrawal transaction because this account at least has like one ETH left in, in this account. Uh, and so, if you can somehow efficiently verify that then again, like there is no way that Alice could have spent, spent more than like nine ETH within this intermediate period. And you just have to have a very optimized way to actually do each of the calls. Uh, and so yeah, again, so it really builds upon like okay, this cheaper proof, right? So it needs to be substantially cheaper because otherwise it doesn't make sense. So when when you would like try to change things uh, somehow, then like yeah, if you still have to execute transactions, then you still incur like lots of the overhead of like yeah, just doing a full ZKV uh, ZK uh, So by just having to check the transactions, you just need the process like, much more efficient than you would have to do um, And so this is like quite nice. So it, not, it doesn't work in like the general case, but it will often work in like the, the normal cases because most people just have like ETH in their account and it's not like they immediately like buy it and they want to withdraw it. It's, they have some ETH and they can actually immediately use it on L2 because it's still on L2. But they can also like immediately withdraw it to L1. And there is also like, yeah, it doesn't depend on like this full ZKVM machinery uh, circuits to be able to do so. So it's also like very uh, attractive, like optimistic rollups because they don't have to actually like they have this like full ZKVM machinery going on. They can just implement this like very short like proof system and like greatly optimized with walls. Almost out of time, I guess. Uh, so, okay, it's, it, and this system is like only like uh, described for like ETH withdrawals, but of course uh, you can build upon the system to actually also add the support. Um, but yeah, the nice thing is that we actually don't have to do this ourselves. So uh, this could actually work directly in like smart contracts, so, uh, smart, uh, smart contracts, uh, bridge smart contracts. So we don't have to like build uh, support effectively. In so this also makes like proof generation times like even more uh, like less important. So yeah, you can already speed up withdrawals in like multiple ways. Like you can also use like liquidity providers for uh, for uh, like, yeah, uh, fungible tokens and stuff like that. So that means that proof generation times really aren't that important anymore. It's just like for proof generation times and that just decides on like how expensive transactions are on L2. And we think that by having like this more uh, new proof generation systems and uh, just, just general proof, of, uh, proof of optimization systems that in the end we are like very optimistic that okay, we can get like very cheap transactions, uh, very similar like type 2, type 3. Uh, okay, that's it. Thank you very much.